In the previous video, I showed you how to create a route. And within that route, we created a function, which then we created some variables, which we then passed into a view. In a real world application, you wouldn't do it this way. You would create a controller. And within the controller, that is where you would put all the logic that you want to be done when someone visits a specific route. So let's go ahead and create a controller. To do that, just open up your terminal within the root of your project and do PHP artisan make colon controller. And the proper way to do it in Laravel will be to create the controller with whatever you want it to be called and then controller. So in this uh, tutorial, I'm going to do uh, a user controller, something where we're going to manage all the parts of users. So adding users, deleting users, all that sort of stuff. So we will do user controller. And as you notice, I've put capitals there. And then I'll hit enter. As you can see, it's been created. So if we go to our app folder within our project and then go to HTTP, you should see a controllers folder. Click into there and there is the user controller there. What you see on the screen is just a basic class which extends the base Laravel controller. Don't worry too much about all of this. All you should know is that Artisan has done all the heavy lifting for you and you don't have to type any of this stuff out. So now that we have a controller, let's go back to our route and let's remove all of this stuff. So we don't want this stuff to, to uh, be in our routes file. We just want it to refer to a controller and that's where all the logic is done. So now when someone visits the base URL, they're going to go to the user controller and within the user controller, they are going to a specific method. Let's create a method within our controller. Let's do public function show users. So what we're going to do is we're going to show the users in our database on the front page. Go back to our routes controller, make sure it's user controller and then put an at sign and then do show users. So as you can see, this and this match. So now when someone visits it, it will connect to the user controller. It will go to this method and inside this method is where we put the logic. So if I were to do a die in a dump and just say hello and hit save and then go to our application and hit refresh, you'll notice that hello is coming up. So essentially what you could do is you could return a view and if we go to our views folder, uh, resources, views, and we have our home.blade, we can just do view home. If we refresh that, our view comes up. We can also pass the data into our view. So if we just did hello equals hello, and we did compact hello, actually I'll just change this to hello, how are you? Uh, we're going to compact the variable. Notice we don't put the dollar sign there. And then we go into our view, which is home.blade.php, and we just do hello there. Go back to our, uh, our front end and refresh it, and you'll see that the data has passed through to the view. Okay, so as you can see, a controller is technically just a middleman between a route and a view. It also can connect with a model and grab the data from the database and then display it in the view. Previously, we had created two models. So if we go to our PHP My Admin, you'll notice that we have a users model and a posts model. What if we wanted to grab the users out of this model? Well, all we'd have to do is call the user model. So use app model, uh, sorry, use app uh, user. Now, as you can see, if you go into app and then user, that's where it is. So we're just using, we're calling that in so we can, we can use it. And then we can do users equals user, which refers to this, get. And that's going to get all the users that are in our database. Then what we'll do is we'll compact it and send it to the view. So let's remove the hello thing and we'll just do users. We'll then go into our blade and we'll put, we'll do a die and a dump users. 
actually we won't do it in our blade we'll do it in our uh in our controller we'll do dd users and let's go to our front end now and refresh it you'll notice it comes up with a blank collection now the reason why it's blank is because we have nothing in our database so i'm just going to add something manually into the database so you can see it come up so i'm just going to type in my name my email i'm just going to type in a password some notes choose the created at date and choose the updated date as well and hit go all right now if we refresh it you should see that there's one in the collection and it is the it's me it's the uh, row that i just added in so let's now compact it as you can see we've compacted the users variable and we're going to send it over to our view but what, because it is an array what we need to do is we need to uh, iterate through the array or through a for each loop so in uh, laravel blade you can do at for each users which refers to the users variable which has been passed through as just make it as user and then n for each and then within there you can do user and then if we go into our table this is one of the properties here f name so let's just do f name and user l name if you go back to our project and hit refresh you should see my name has come up we can also do user notes. Now, if some if a property doesn't exist, let's just do test, for example, you'll notice that nothing happens. You don't get any error, which is great. But that is how you use a controller to grab data from a model and then send it to your view. However, you might not just want to grab all the users, you might want to grab a specific user. And this is where Eloquent is really powerful because it allows you to do database queries, but they're very, very simple. So for example, if I wanted to find myself with the name or with my email, for example, um, I could do it by doing this. Let's create, uh, let's take away all of this and we'll create a variable called user and we'll do user find actually we'll do user where email and we'll make it sean at mrdigital.com.au and then we will do first so what essentially it's going to do is it's going to query the user model it's going to check for a user who has that email and then it's going to display the first one it's not going to come up as an array it's going to come up as one row so therefore if we go into our blade let's just remove this whole if statement uh, for each statement otherwise it's going to cause an error and then what we're going to do is we are going to compact that and send the user across so then we can just go into our home.blade and just do user let's go into our front end and see what that does as you can see it comes through as a, a json string um, so then obviously you can just do user f name oh sorry f name user l name there you go another way you could do it is if you knew the id of the person so if uh, for example i'm id of one in the database you could easily just call it by doing user equals user find one that's going to find the ID of one and then it's going to bring the user over. So if we do that and we refresh it, nothing comes up. But uh, if we do a die in a dump of user, we should see the user here. Okay. Go back into our, oh, okay. So I, I forgot to, I didn't, I removed this. So we'll hit save again and we'll take away the die in a dump of course and refresh it you'll see my name is there still okay so what if the user doesn't exist what if you do a try and search for user and they actually don't exist let's see what happens 
an error comes up. Okay, so the user doesn't exist. So to get around that, what you do is you do find or fail. And what that will do is it will actually create a 404 error and it won't d cause an actual error. Um, so that will be, that is probably the easiest way to get around if uh, a user doesn't exist or a record doesn't exist in your database and you try and call it. If you're trying to find a user based on their name or their email address, um, but you don't want to get one specific user, you could do something like user where email, actually not, you wouldn't do it with email because emails are, are uh, uh, unique. So you might want to do where F name is Sean and then do get, and that will get an array of all the users. So if we do a diner dump of user, and refresh it, you should see a collection come up with one in the array. If we go into the database and we create a new row, and I'm just going to create another Sean with some gibberish in, in there. And we refresh it. You should see now that it has an it has two records in the array because there are two Sean's that exist in the table. That's where you would then do a for each loop with the variable and display it on your view. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to pass uh, data through a route to a controller. So when you're making a get request, for example, you had a users page and inside users, you wanted to view a user by their ID and you only wanted to see the data for that specific user. Let's create a route which will accept this variable and then do a query to the database, grab the user's data and then display it in the view. To do that, we firstly need to create the route. So let's make it users, user, and then create a variable. Now the variable can be anything. It can be hello if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna call it ID so that I know what it is. So um, once we have created that, let's go into our user controller to our show users method and receive that. Now again, it, that does not have to be that. It doesn't have to be named the same. It's just a variable that we've created that's going to be receiving that. So it could be hello as well if you wanted to. Um, so just to keep everything tidy, we're gonna call it the same as this one. Now that we've got the ID, let's remove this and do user equals user find or fail ID. And then we're going to compact that and send the user to the view. Okay, so let's save that and save our, view, our routes as well. Go into our project and let's hit refresh. There we go. So user one is coming up, user two is coming up, but then we do user three and that goes to the not found. In the next video, we're going to learn how to create, update and delete from the database.